All right, so um, I felt like, I mean, this is pretty close. Like you can kind of see where I'm at now. That actually looks pretty good. If I run my nail up it, it doesn't catch on this side, but it catches still just a little bit right here on this side. So I've got a little bit more to go there. Um, I actually did just add a little bit more weld right here um, because I need something for the RTV to seal against. Otherwise, I'm just going to have oil leaking down into that screw hole and out just like was the original problem. The other thing too is I just basically pressure tested it. So I just, I plugged the other, the opposite side of this hole right here with my thumb. And then I stuck my rubber tipped air compressor in here and I blew it and I can still hear air leaking out of here. So I'm actually not done welding. So I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to stitch this thing closed. So no oil should ever get down into that cavity. And apparently I didn't get that cavity totally full. I got it you know, there's pro it's probably actually down in the very bottom. I mean, it's a, I don't know. This was just kind of a difficult weld to begin with, uh, not, not let alone for a, a DIY beginner like myself. But, uh, so I'm actually gonna go stitch this all the way shut again. And then I'm actually gonna try to make this fl a little bit better flush. And then I'll do the, uh, the pressure test again. And I think it should be fine, but I should have just done this last night when I was welding it before. But look, you can kind of see like the lapping is working out pretty good. So here's a before picture, and here's what it looks like right now. So there you go. All right, so I've gone ahead and cleaned up the weld uh, a little bit. Um, so what I found, and I'm glad that I pressure tested this. So basically what I did is I just took my uh, rubber air nozzle, and then I plugged one, one side of the hole, the screw hole with my finger, and then the other side with uh, the rubber tip of this nozzle okay and i found that there was air still leaking out so i actually got some soapy water and put it over and, and i did a bubble test so what i found is is i still ha i had some some pinholes or some wormholes uh in this weld or i didn't weld far enough toward this side of the crankcase to actually uh weld the entire crack shut so one of those two things happened um but you'll notice there is, there are quite a few uh, pinholes here, and I'm thinking if this is kind of behaves the same way as steel, I might need to just increase my gas flow just a little bit, uh, so that uh, that could be one reason that's happening. I mean, it could be you know that the the alloy, the cast alloy, is just contaminated, and it's always going to be dirty. Um, but at this point, at least I got it looking clean. I'm gonna get some acetone and just kind of give this uh, a once over one more time. And then just where you kind of see these spots, I'm just gonna hit it once more with a, uh, with some spot welding and then uh, I'll pressure test it again and then I think I'll just be done. But but overall, like I'm, I'm you know, super stoked at, you know, how this is turning out. Uh, this is lapped perfectly. You know, I use, again, using the, the method that I've already showed you. These surfaces are, are nice and smooth. You know, they're, they're, uh, they're going to go back together. Okay. So here we are a couple days later, lots of, uh, frustrations later. And I got my engine stand. Uh, actually this is what I did this weekend is I built my engine stand. Um, this is super handy to work on. Uh, it took me like an hour to build and then a little bit longer to paint, but uh, I got this idea off of some other guy I came across on YouTube. Um, I'll put a link in the description or show you who he is here. He's actually he's actually got some really good videos on this. Uh, uh, I think he actually built a DT125, but they're pretty much the same. So uh, I got I got the idea for the engine stand uh, from him. Let me just back up a little bit so you can see it. Um, anyways, it's super handy. All right, so let me walk you through some DIY welding 101 that uh, lessons that I learned on my own uh, so that you don't have to go and be frustrated like I was. Okay, you remember this cavity here that used to be here that I just filled with weld? Well, I couldn't get it all the way filled up, right? I just couldn't, the stick out would have had to go clear back here, which would have been well over an inch to get down in there and that just wasn't gonna happen. So I ended up just, you know, basically started from like here and forward and then I just basically sealed it all up. Well, the, 
so then I proceed to kind of start welding the crack up on top and I'm getting porosity like you wouldn't believe. And you guys have probably already can already see where this is going, but let me just walk you through it so that you don't, this doesn't happen to you. I was really kind of thinking this cast aluminum is super hard to weld and I don't know, and it is hard to weld. Um, you can actually see right here, there's some porosity coming off of this bead right here. And this is just kind of this common theme um, throughout this entire uh, throughout this entire, you know, welding project. But, um, what was happening is, is I would weld, I'd spot weld, and then there would just be holes that just spatter out from around the edges of the bead. And I'm just like, gosh, this is dirty metal. I'm not getting enough gas. I'm going through all these things to figure out what the heck am I doing wrong? Well, let me just jump right to it. Um, I eventually decided, you know what, here's what I'm doing. And, and the thought just hit me. I, I'm preheating uh, with propane, so I just have a propane bottle here that I'm uh, using to uh, preheat uh, the metal. So I was definitely preheating it, you know, no problem. And uh, the thought just came to me that what I'm actually doing is because I left this pocket in there, I, what I'm doing is I'm superheating this hot air, and then when I weld on it, it gets superheated and then it has to escape somewhere. So where's it going to escape to? It's going to escape the, the path of least resistance, which is still that soft weld puddle that I just barely uh, tacked on there. So this is why I was getting all kinds of uh, porous welds. Um, once I drilled this relief hole, all of a sudden I'm able to weld up here. Not easy, not no problem. I mean, like welding this stuff is it is, it is a challenge. Like this is my first time with a spool gun. I'm not an expert in welding aluminum. Uh, you know, I'm using uh, 4043, 035 wire. So at this point, now I have an airtight uh, uh, setup here. I actually can leave this hole, but what I'm actually gonna do is um, I'm gonna putty up some JB weld and I'm just gonna cram this hole full because again, this is, if you'll recall, I don't know if you've watched my other video on this or if I'm making this clip in the same video, but right up on the top corner of this hole is where, where the crack was. So right up on top here, this is where there was a crack and oil was leaking down through that crack into the bolt hole and then it was leaking out the bolt and then it was getting all over the place. So that was the condition that I got the motorcycle in. And I imagine it's one of the reasons why the guy stopped driving it in the first place is because he couldn't keep oil in it and it was making a huge mess wherever he would park it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take JB Weld and I'm going to sh I'm going to force it into this hole and see if I can hydraulically fill every single cavity that's in there. If um, I think this is airtight on the surface, but regardless, I'm going to force it in there until I get JB Weld to ooze everywhere. Ultimately, I want to see JB Weld ooze into this bolt hole. Once it oozes into that bolt hole, then I'll know that the channel, you know, through which you know oil and stuff could could leak or whatever is is filled, and then. I've got the a quarter inch bit. I can just shove it through there and just kind of clear out the JB weld. And then I've, I've got my bolt hole um, still. But I'll, but I'll know that, that crack in the up, in the up, right up there above my finger is at least filled because there's no other way for me to fill it. So I'm going to leave this hole. Again, uh, I'm just going to fill it with JB weld. I'm going to pack it in there as tight as I possibly can. And then I got to go through and clean up some of this spatter, you know, <sighs> another learn something from me you guys uh put protect your uh you know get some thin sheet metal or something and stick it in there and just protect uh you know the rest of what you got going on but so that was my experience um i messed up big time trapping all that air and having that cavity right under the floor here where i was trying to weld and then once you seal it off that hot air has got to escape somewhere that's why i was that's why it was so impossible i mean and i was getting so much porosity so uh, there you go. Make yourself make sure that there's a relief hole somewhere if you're going to be trying to weld a floor on this cast aluminum stuff, especially. Um, while I was sanding and stuff, I actually was nicking the walls, you know, with my four inch grinder. So I eventually got a three inch and then a two inch grinder, but uh, they're they're actually supposed to be a bolt hole right here. So I added uh, I welded some more material on here. So I'm I'm gonna go lap this case again and make 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 it look like this hole again. Um, but not before I JB weld it. So that's my next step. JB weld, lap the cases, uh, pull that, pull this uh, um, uh, pin bearing out 
this needle bearing and then clean it up a little bit better and then I'm gonna start rebuilding. I'm stoked with my new engine stand. So here we go. Here's just a little bit closer to look at the engine stand. So I made this just out of what, I mean, I had made out what I had laying around. Had some two inch angle iron sitting around. This is actually made out of a construction or building strap. So the idea here is I can just take this screwdriver and undo this. And right now it's like clamped in place. Like it's pretty solid, it doesn't move. So now I can just undo that and then undo this side. And then I can rotate it and then retighten it. And then, so like right now I'm gonna lock it in the upright position so I can fill that with JV Weld. So there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna use JV Weld. This is the strongest epoxy that they make. So here it's it specifies aluminum, right? This is the red and black combination. So this is one that you just mix in equal parts and mix it to, I think it said a gray color, but I've used this stuff before. Yeah, you mix it to kind of like a, a grayish color. So because I've got to get it in this hole and I want to fill the cavity until it starts to start, uh, I'm going to put a picture on the screen here, but it's basically, here's the hole that I really want to make sure that I fill. It's inside this bolt hole. I want to see it start oozing out there. So I'm going to take this um, syringe and I'm actually going to fill it half with the, the weld and then the other half with the hardener. And then I'm going to mix it using my None other than my handy shish kebab stick. So mixing it right in here is going to allow me to just push it right in there. And then I think I'll be able to control this, you know, from being a, becoming a, a, a huge. Okay, so there's half black. I've got it like right at five mil. So now I'll put in half white. Over this bottom hole and I'll just start mixing it around. I'm just trying to get a unif nice uniform color all the way all the way up and down. Okay so now I'm going to take this force it in into all those cavities oh look it did exactly what i wanted to i got I'm gonna turn on my headlamp here sweet it started oozing really good into this hole that's exactly what i wanted it to do now i know that that cavity is nice and full Okay, so I'm actually just gonna, I've got plenty of material here left in my syringe. So I'm just gonna kind of clean this up, wipe it on my cardboard here. But you can see, if I can get you a good angle. In fact, I'll take a still shot real quick so that you can see how that's oozing into that hole just like I wanted it to. Okay, so I've got that oozing into, into that hole really good. So I'll take this wooden stick and I'll just kind of swipe it around, just make sure that it's really caked in there. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna shove even more through there. any air trapped in there so I'm actually going to take this and shove it in there I'm going to see if I can get some air pockets out of there oh I just got a big bubble so that's good so 
doesn't really matter where I get this because I'm going to relap the cases anyways. Just let it set up. Okay. I think that's it. I'm going to let that set up. Okay, so I'm done welding. I'm done, you know, uh, lapping the crankcase. I've got a good mating surface. This should be really good. Um, now it's just time to clean up the crankcase and so I can start installing bearings. One thing I got to do right now, though, is I got to extract this uh, transmission bearing, uh, this needle bearing, because, I mean, with everything that I've been doing and welding and stuff, there's a whole bunch of shavings and garbage in there. Like, that bearing is no longer no good. So before I really start deep cleaning this sucker... Uh, I'm going to get a blind bearing puller and I'm going to hammer that sucker out. So let's do that right now.